welcome friends i have been prepared some video lectures for the subject physics for standard 12 if you like these videos we subscribe to my channels youtube channels rd patil and press bell icon button for the notifications of the video lectures so here i will be introduce first the syllabus of subject physics for 12th standard welcome for online physics class from 2020 our syllabus can be changed by the maharashtra government maharashtra state board the syllabus for the physics is like this the syllabus can be divided into six units first unit is rotational motion and mechanical properties of fluids second unit is kinetic theory and thermodynamics third unit is oscillations and waves fourth unit is electrostatics and current electric current fifth unit is magnetisms and sixth unit is modern physics in these units the chapters are like this in first unit that is rotational motion and mechanical properties of fluids in that unit there are two chapters first chapter is rotational dynamics and second chapter is mechanical properties of fluids in second unit kinetic theory of gases and thermodynamics in that unit there are two chapters kinetic theory of gases and radiation that is third chapters and fourth chapter is thermodynamics these are the two chapters included in the unit second in unit third there are three chapters oscillations that is fifth chapter sixth chapter is superposition superposition of waves and seventh chapter is wave optics these are the three chapters included in unit third in unit sec fourth there are two chapters electrostatics current electricity these are the two chapters in unit 5 magnetic fields due to electric current magnetic materials electromagnetic induction and ac circuit these are the four chapters included in the unit 5 in unit 6 there are three chapters dual nature of radiation and matter that is 14 cha number chapters 15 number chapters is structure of atoms and nuclei and last chapter is semiconductor devices the mass distributions of these chap chapters are not given by the board state board but in the books two lines are there that lines are is like this the chapters are equally divided equally marks divided if the question paper is for 70 marks there will be four or five marks for each chapters this is the marks distributions if we like this video subscribe to my channels subscribe to my channels rd patils 
I will be starts here. The first chapters that is the rotational dynamics. That is the rotational dynamics. Before studying the rotational dynamics, dynamics is the words includes in the mechanics includes in the mechanics therefore we recall or recap some points about the mechanics mechanics before that in this lecture in the in this lectures we divide the rotational dynamics in two parts in first parts the topic to be learned are characteristics of circular motion its kinematics and dynamics applications of uniform circular motions and vertical circular motion these are the main topics to be learned in the chapters the objectives according to boards that is the distinguish between centripetal forces and centripetal forces also to apply the principle or the theory in our daily life these are the objectives now after that we explain or we recap some concepts that concepts are mechanics that concepts about the dynamics and we, dynamics is included in mechanics we have already already told to you now mechanics mechanics is the branch of physics dealing with particles or objects either rest or in motion or in motion whenever there will be object will be raised to move from one point to the another point or the object which are in motions we stop they stop them that means we give the rest to it after applying the some force that is included in the mechanics mechanics can be divided into two branches statics and kinetics statics means it is the branch of mechanics in which we have studied about the object which are at rest rest situations la jara still tar tancha babat ja thikane abhyas kela jato that is called statics another branch of the mechanics is kinetics in kinetics we have studied the objects which are in motion that means the moving objects the study of moving objects in the branch of kinetics also kinetics can be divided into two branches kinematics and dynamics kinematics in that we can study about the motion of the object without considering the cause without considering the cause for example if we throw the ball then the distance traveled by the ball or displacement traveled by the ball speed of the ball velocity of the ball acceleration of that ball to study these physical quantities for that purpose we must we may not be known the source of the motion why the motion will be possible that source cannot be necessary to study these concepts that is called the kinematics that is called the kinematics another branch of kinetics is dynamics in this we study the motion of the object along with considering its causes here we give the examples in kinetic kinematics 
when the ball is thrown when the ball is thrown in this in this the motion of the ball is due to the applied force by you if we throw the balls that motion is due to the applied force if the force is small the distance traveled by the ball or displacement traveled by the ball speed of the ball velocity of the ball is very small as the force is larger these concepts are larger. that means here if we study the motion of the object along with considering its cause that means momentum of that particles increases its energy increases power work can be increases that is due to the large applied force that means if we consider the cause in that time at that time the study of momentum energy power work etc that can be studied with considering the its cause that is called the dynamics in these chapters we have consider the causes for the motion for the motion hence for the motion of rotation rotational motion so here we give the name rotational dynamics that is about the dynamics if we start these chapters for that purpose some points we have already studied in the 11th standard can be discussed here can be recalls here that points must be necessary to study the rotational dynamics that points are what is meant by circular motion what is the concept of center of mass what are the kinematic equations of the motion and do you know real and pseudo forces their origin and application these are the concept must be recalled before studying the chapters rotational motion in 11th standard we study the motion along a line that is linear motion or translational motion projectile motion and circular motion here we will study the rotational motion but with considering its causes hence the name is rotational dynamics now some recall points are circular motion what do you mean by circular motions it is the motion of the object along the circular path this circular motions may be uniform or may not be uniform that will be depends upon the speed that we have already studied in the 11th standard second point is center of mass it is an imaginary point at which the whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated so as to study the motion of the object in accordance with the newton's laws of motion that means when we move a small disk in a circular orbit at that time all the particles of that disk perform circular motions except a single particles the particles at which the whole mass of the body is supposed to be concentrated that particles can perform only rotational motions and that moves along the straight lines or linear motion that performs linear path that cannot perform the circular path that particles is the center of mass of that body these are the primary concepts another primary concepts are kinetic equations of motions real forces pseudo forces that will be recalls after that first we analogous between the linear and circular or rotational motion when the body moves along a line along a line that is called the linear motion or translational motion if the body moves along the circumference of a circular orbit along the circumference of a circular orbit 
about the pixel point about the pixel point at that time we say that that motion is this circular motion when the body rotates about its own axis about its own axis or about one of the axis at that time every particle performs circular motion every particle perform circular motions about that axis that is called the rotational motion that is called rotational motion in circular motion and rotational motion the displacement performed by that particle is angular angular displacement and in translational motion the displacement is linear motions that is the difference that is the difference only but the angular displacement is analogous with the linear displacement angular displacement here is angular displacement when the particle from, goes from point a to point b in circular motions like this along the anti clockwise sense along the anti clockwise sense at that time the particle a goes from point a to b in certain time at that time its position vector displays some angle like theta here given theta that is the angular displacement that is the angular displacement when the particle displays along a straight lines i draw arrow i draw arrow here arrow displays from one point to the another point along the line that is called the linear displacement that is called the linear displacement so angular displacement is analogous with the linear displacement the relation between angular displacement and linear displacement can be represented here linear displacement and angular displacement that is the relation between that is s is equal to theta into r since angle is equal to length of arc length of arc upon its radius we have already studied in the ninth standard in geometry and from that equations we write s is equal to theta into r as this angle is very small as this angle is very small within the short time interval at that time that angular displacement is a vector quantity and according to right hand thumb rule its direction can be find out like this when the particle goes from point a to point b a to point b at that and the thumb is outstretched at that time the thumb denotes the direction of infinitesimal angular displacement so here so here vector s that is the smaller linear displacement that is vector quantity that is linear displacement that is linear displacement and that linear displacement in vector form can be represented like this vector s is equal to vector theta cross vector r since in anti clockwise sense here i explain with some diagrams here if we consider this is the circular motion of the particles from point a to point b just minutes this is the point b in the directions a to b at that time according to our right hand thumb rule as the direction is along this direction this is the tangential velocity here and this is the angular displacement this is the angular displacement here this 
this is linear velocity this is radius vector this is angular displacement here we cannot represent the angular displacement uh, by symbolically if this distance from point a to point b is s linear displacement this point is a and this point is b when the particle goes from point a to point b at that time the tangential velocity is like this that's mean displacement is along the tangential directions tangential directions this is vector theta infinitesimal angular displacement from theta to vector r theta to vector r this is the radius vector this is angular displacement theta from theta to r at that time outstretched from denote the directions along the tangential velocity that means along the direction of linear displacement therefore we write here therefore we write here therefore we write here therefore we write here oh just minutes mm -hmm. we write here vector s is equal to vector theta cross vector r this is the relation between linear displacement and angular displacement angular displacement is analogous with the linear displacement another quantity which can be represents the velocity linear velocity linear velocity the rate of change of linear displacement with respect to time that is called the linear velocity we already studied in the 11th standard also in 10th standard and its unit is meter per second in circular motion or in rotational motions the rate of change of angular displacement with respect to time is called the angular velocity it's called the angular velocity its expression is omega is equal to d theta by dt and its unit is radian per second here angular velocity is a vector quantity and its direction is also find out by using the right hand thumb rule if the particle goes from point a to point b at the time direction of angular velocity is vertically upwards like the anti clockwise sense if the motion is along the clockwise directions at that time the direction of angular velocity is vertically downward direction that can be represented in the figures here if the motion is along the anti clockwise signs at that time the direction is vertically upward directions when that is clockwise in horizontal circular motions at that time vertical at the time the direction of angular velocity is along the downward direction the relation between angular velocity and linear velocity is represented like this Lin relation between linear velocity and angular velocity linear velocity is equal to the rate of change of linear displacement here the linear displacement can be represented by s from a to point b therefore taking the limit for short time intervals that is instantaneous angular velocity can be represented by vector v is equal to limit of delta s by delta t with respect to time and t tending to zero at that time that is called the derivative of linear displacement with respect to time substitute the value of linear displacement as a theta cross vector r in this equations and taking the derivative with respect to time we get derivative of angular displacement with respect to time cross vector r plus angular displacement cross vector cross derivative of vector r where vector r is the position vector at that instant 
as the time tending to zero if the time tending to zero then the motion of the particle is not possible that is tends to the same points therefore the position vector cannot be changes its positions when the time tending to zero hence the derivative of position vector is considered as a zero therefore velocity is equal to the rate of change of angular displacement that is considered angular velocity in vector form and the position vector the second term is here zero is the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity is linear velocity vector in in form in vector form is linear velocity is equal to cross product of the angular velocity and position vector that is from vector omega cross vector r that represent the direction of linear velocity hence we write like this third point is the acceleration in linear motion the acceleration is the rate of change of linear velocity with respect to time that is a is equal to dv by dt its unit is meter per second square similarly for circular motion or rotational motion the angular displacement is the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time that is derivative of omega with respect to time that is called the angular acceleration and that can be represented by alpha its unit is radian per second square the direction of angular acceleration also can be represented by using the right hand thumb but in that case as the speed it will be depends upon the change in speed of the particles in circular motion if the speed increases angular velocity is in the direction of the angular velocity in the direction of angular velocity that is also we consider the change in angular velocity change in angular velocity is a direction yes but as the speed decreases but as the speed decreases as the speed decreases the direction is opposite to the direction of velocity angular velocity angular velocity is opposite directions yes that means change in angular velocity is in opposite direction change in angular velocity is in opposite directions therefore that can be represented here in figures in this figures in first figures the angular speed is increases in second figures angular velocity decreases angular speed decreases the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration is here the linear acceleration is derivative of change in derivative of velocity with respect to time linear velocity with respect to time we substituted the value of linear velocity as omega vector omega cross vector r here and taking the derivative we get we get the two terms we get the two terms that is vector alpha cross vector r that is the acceleration due to the change in speed change in speed or change in angular velocity that will change is the called the tangential angular acceleration tangential acceleration that is not angular acceleration that is tangential linear acceleration that is the tangential linear acceleration and another is vector omega cross vector v where v is the instantaneous velocity here we consider instantaneous velocity that is the vector omega cross vector p that is the acceleration due to change in the direction change in the direction of sir particles in circular motions hence that acceleration is called the the direction of this acceleration is along the radius towards the center hence it is called the centripetal acceleration that can be explained afterwards and eh? these are the three points these are the analogous between the linear and circular motions in linear motions we call displacement velocity acceleration and in circular motion or in rotational motion the displacement is angular displacement velocity is angular velocity and acceleration is angular acceleration that's mean these three points 
angular displacement angular velocity and angular accelerations are analogous with the linear displacement that is displacement velocity and acceleration in linear motion or translational motions respectively these are the three points and their relations are given in the last column next point can can be recalls that is the kinematic equations that is the kinematic equation in linear motion in linear motions the kinematic there are three kinematic equations we have already studied we have already studied that three kinematic equations are first kinematic equations b is equal to u plus at second kinematic equations is s is equal to ut plus half at square and third kinematic equations is v square is equal to u square plus 2 times as where u is the initial velocity v is final velocity after time t s is linear displacement and a is the acceleration a is acceleration in circular motion or rotational motion similarly there are three kinematic equations instead of v we write omega where omega is final angular velocity instead of u we write omega zero instead of a we write alpha that is angular accelerations t is the time and instead of s we write theta that is angular displacement these are analogous these are analogous we have already studied hence the kinetic equations for circular motions and rotational motions are written as after replacing v as omega u as omega zero ss angle angular displacement that is theta and instead of a we write alpha these are the three kinematic equations for the circular motions and rotational motion that is the points to be recalls another recall points are real forces do you know real forces and pseudo forces real forces means the forces arises in the motion due, the motions arises due to the actual known actual or known interaction between the objects between the objects then such a forces are called the real forces that means the motion of the objects arises due to the known interaction known interaction or actual forces will be acts on it for example when the object is placed at some height and released it from the height that object falls down falls down the motion can be seen the motion can be seen and the effect of that motion is due to the gravitational force we have known that we have known that the, there will be x gravitational force that is the known force that motion is due to the real force gravitational force is the real force another forces are we know that the electrons can be revolves around the nucleus in a circular orbit and that is due to the electrostatic force of attraction between the electrons and positively charged nucleus positively charged protons which are inside the nucleus and due to that force the electrons can be revolves in a circular orbit that is known force that is the known force nuclear forces force of frictions these are the known forces these are the known forces therefore the motion is if the motion is due to these known forces then that forces are called the real forces then that forces are called the real forces pseudo forces the motion of the object is observed but that motion cannot be explained 
by using the force which can be applied here. That force cannot be explained. Wait. The source of that motion cannot be known. Then such a process we have considered or assumed that forces are called the pseudo process. For example, when we seated in bus, when we seated in bus, bus is in rest position. And when the driver starts the bus and accelerates it, at that time we push back. We push back. Why you can push back? That is unknown. That is unknown. We know that the driver applied the force on the accelerator that is along the forward directions. But we, our motion is along the backward directions. Why you lean back or push back? That is cannot be known. Hence, such a force we have assumed why you we have assumed a force applied to you along the back directions that is uh, we have assumed in that motion such a type of force is pseudo force when the moving bus driver applied the brakes at that time we push forward we lean forward that is also due to unknown force also when this bus suddenly turns towards the left side at that time we lean right side or the bus turns towards the right side we lean left side that means the motion of the passenger inside the bus at that time bus is acceleration at that time the bus is in acceleration that means the forces arises in the accelerated frame of reference that forces are pseudo forces the real forces the real forces when the bus is in uniform motions and we throw a ball vertically upwards at that time that falls down in your hand when the bus is moves uniformly but when bus moves with changing speed increasing speed at that time ball moves back that cannot be back in your hand that's are due to the pseudo forces these are the examples i have been explained here yeah. now we study this about the characteristics of circular motion that means circular motion is the accelerated motion since velocity can be changes velocity can be changes velocity changes due to the change in direction in circular motions the directions at every instant can be changes direction cannot be remain same that means in circular motions the direction changes the direction of velocity changes that means velocity changes also in some circular motions there will be change in the speed also in non-uniform circular motion there will be change in the speed speed may be increases or may be decreases that means circular motion is the accelerated motion that is the accelerated motion that is the first character second characteristics it is periodic motion it is periodic motion the motion of particles along this circular path repeats again and again same path again and again again and again if the time is same during each revolution for each revolution then that motion is uniform circular motion that means in circular motion, the particles repeat the same path again and again. Then that is called the periodic motion. That means these are the characteristics of circular motions. 
we have studied the characteristics of circular motions and kinematics that means the circular motion can be represented by angular displacement angular velocity angular accelerations these are the parameters to explain the circular motion or rotational motion these are the kinematics we, we have considered without any cause of that motions we have studied this that is the kinematics that is the kinematics now we have here explained the horizontal circular motion horizontal we have explained about the horizontal circular motion circular motion can be divided into two parts horizontal circular motions and vertical circular motion here we explain the horizontal circular motions horizontal circular motions also can be divided into two types uniform circular motion as the speed of the object or the particles along the circular path is constant speed constants at that time we say that that motion is uniform circular motion if the speed is not constant then the motion is called the non uniform circular motion this is the difference between the uniform circular motions and non uniform circular motions for example the particles of fan moving with constant speed if the speed of the fan is constant then the the particles of fan perform circular motion and that circular motion is the uniform circular motion but when switch off the fan when we switch off the fan at that time when we switch off the fan at that time the motion of that particles of particles of the fans are non uniforms here we explain with this is the motion of the fan with uniform speed that means every particles of the fan performs uniform circular motions but when we stop when we stop the speed of fan is decreases speed of fan decreases at that time every particles perform circular motion but decreasing speed that is changing speed when we switch off that is non uniform circular motion again if we switch on the fan the speed is increasing until it attains the maximum speed until it attains the maximum speed at that time the motion of the particles of that fans is a non uniform motion non uniform motion that is the difference in uniform circular motions the acceleration is responsible due to change in the direction of the motion of an object change in the motion of the direction of the object speed is remains constant but direction can be changes hence the acceleration will be produced in it the direction of that acceleration is along the radius toward the center hence that is called the centripetal acceleration or also it is called the radial accelerations and it can be represented by vector ar in non uniform circular motions the accelerations the acceleration is responsible due to change in the speed speed continuously changing increasing or decreasing increasing or decreasing also due to the change in directions hence in non uniform circular motions the net acceleration is the combination of tangential acceleration tangential accelerations vector at that is equal to vector alpha cross vector r we already studied the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration and radial acceleration that is ar is equal to vector omega cross vector v that is the difference between uniform circular motions and non uniform another difference is in uniform circular motion speed is constant so angular velocity is constant speed is constant so angular velocity is constant 
thus radial acceleration is constant radial acceleration never change since the expression for the radial acceleration is equal to minus vector omega square vector r or that is equal to minus v square upon r in into unit vector r and that is equal to vector omega cross vector v that is constant since the value of angular velocity that is omega is constant here speed is constant speed is constant therefore radial acceleration is constant but in non uniform circulation speed is changing so angular velocity is not constant hence radial acceleration is not constant radial acceleration changing in ucm another difference is in ucm in ucm speed is constant so angular velocity is constant thus angular acceleration is zero since the angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity if there will be no change in the angular velocity then the angular acceleration is zero the value of alpha is zero the value of alpha is zero here but in non ucm angular acceleration is not zero since there will be change in angular velocity as increasing speed at that time angular acceleration is along the direction of axis in the direction of angular velocity and for decreasing speed the angular acceleration is along the axis but in opposite directions we have already explained the figures in the slide before we have learned last difference is in ucm force involves only due to centripetal accelerations in only due to centripetal accelerations that is the centripetal force here the due to only centripetal force and in the non uniform circular motion the forces involved due to radial accelerations as well as tangential accelerations that is the net force is the combination of centripetal force and force due to angular accelerations angular accelerations these are the difference between the uniform circular motions and non uniform circular motions next topic is the dynamics of a circular motion dynamics of a circular motion dynamics means we have studied the motions with considering the cause of that motion circular motions in circular motion it's possible due to the centripetal force it is the force the force which is acted on the body to perform circular motion to perform circular motions about the axis about the axis and the direction of that force is always directed towards the center that is called the centripetal force it is the force acting on the particles or the body it is the force acting on the body to perform circular motions it is always directed towards the center that is the called centripetal force in centripetal force it is the force experienced by the body experienced by the body experienced by the body that means the inside the body the particles experiences the forces and that forces goes away from it just like when we seated in the bus and bus is suddenly rotated or suddenly moves along the circumference or on the curve road towards the left sides at that time the motion of the bus is due to the centripetal force due to the centripetal force when the bus turns at that time the tires moves away from the center on the curve road and at that time the force of friction will be arising and that direction of the force of friction is toward the center toward the center due to the force of friction the bus moves safely on that curve road on that curve that is the centripetal force but at the same time when the bus turns toward the left sides at that time passenger seated inside that bus leans 
towards right side towards right sides and that is due to some force we that force we assume that we assume that and that force is the centripetal force that force is centripetal force the direction of that centripetal force is away from the center away from the center hence it is called the centripetal force this the difference between centripetal force and centripetal force this force that means in centripetal force the centripetal forces arises in the inner shell frame of reference that is observed in the inner shell frame of reference the bus is moves constant speed speed constant same observer is outside the bus that means the bus is turns bus is turn towards left sides that can be observed that is in with constant speed motion hence that is the in inertial frame of reference the inertial frame of reference which steady or moving with constant velocity moving with a constant velocity that is called the centripetal force that is called the inertial frame of reference and that cent centripetal forces arises in the inertial frame of reference but the centripetal forces arises in the non inertial frame of reference bus is the accelerated frame of reference in passengers observed the force along the outward directions that means that motion arises in the non inertial frame of reference that is the non inertial frame of reference bus is the non inertial frame of reference since it is the accelerated motion the direction of the bus continuously changes that means the direction of velocity continuously changes hence that is the accelerated frame of reference and the centripetal forces that are pseudo forces that forces arises in the non inertial frame of reference next difference is centripetal force is the real force since its effect as well as source of force is known here the effect is bus is turns towards the left sides that is seen also that is due to the force of friction that force of friction is known that means the effect is effect as well as source of forces are known hence that is called the real force centripetal force is the real force here in centripetal forces the passenger leans away from the center that is in non inertial frame of reference its effect is seen the motion of the passengers both passengers leans towards the right side when the bus turns towards right, left that can be seen but the source of force cannot be known force of source of force is not known hence that is observed in the non inertial frame of reference non inertial frame force hence that is the non inertial non real force non real force or that is called the pseudo force for example so we have already explained it with, with the example of the bus here another examples for centripetal forces is the satellites are orbiting around the earth in a circular orbit satellites are revolves natural satellite is moon moon can be revolves around the earth in a circular orbit that is the one of the example that is due to the gravitational force also planets can be revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit that is also due to the gravitational force the example of centrifugal force we have if we moves with a motorcycle on a muddy road at that time mud sticks with the tires if the motion is towards north sides at that time the mud sticks loose its away the south sides flying away mud flowing away from the tire of motorcycles when it moves on mud road that is one of the examples of the centrifugal force in centrifugal machines like washing machines mixers centrifugal forces the principle of centrifugal forces can be used in that machines the expressions for centripetal force are given here the force is mass into acceleration acceleration is towards the center 
negative sign here indicates that the directions is opposite to the directions of this vector r that is the position vectors these are the expressions in terms of angular velocity in terms of linear velocity here we considered vector r hence here we write r square here we consider unit vector that is the magnitude is one here the magnitude is r that r and this r cancels here the negative signs in these three expressions are explained the direction is opposite to the direction of vector r here another equation of the centripetal force we have already explained the radial acceleration is vector omega cross vector v hence here we write positive terms these are the expressions of the cent centripetal forces the expression for centripetal forces are here given the centripetal force is away from the center and centripetal force are toward the center as the motion is continuously along the same circular path along the same circular path at that time the centripetal force and centrifugal forces are equal are equal are equal. when the path is same path is same i have been given another examples when we seated in a merry go rounds lahanpani tumhi sagde पाण्यावर बसलेलं मेरी गोराउंड्स म्हणजे तो लहान मुलांचा जो पाळणा असतो सर्क्युलर ऑर्बिटमध्ये फिरतो हॉरिझॉन्टल सर्क्युलर ऑर्बिटमध्ये फिरतो त्याच्यात घोडे असतात मोर असतात इतर काही प्राण्यांचे असतात वाघ सिंह असतात त्यांच्यावर तुम्ही बसतात आणि तो जो पाळणावाला असतो तो पाळणावाला त्याला सर्क्युलर मोशन देतो सर्क्युलर मोशन देतो तो जसजसा स्पीड इन्क्रीज करतो तस तस तुम्ही तुमचा जो रॉड आहे तो रॉड असा आवे जातो लांब जातो The circular motion, the radius just the radius increases. So, when you have constant speed, then you have to turn the path as to constant. That means, the more the speed increases, the more the radius of the path increases. So, that means, as the path is increasing, the radius goes on increasing. at that time centripetal force is larger than the centripetal force than the centripetal but when that man attains the constant speed constant speed ne motions madhe jeva jata asel tar tya vedas at that time the path is remains constant radius is constant radius is constant in that case centripetal force and centrifugal force are having equal magnitude Hence, the path is remains the same. As the man is stop to give the motion due to some air resistance or due to frictional resistance, the speed of that motions is decreases in decreasing speed. जब तो decreasing speed में जाते हो, तब वजह से radius कमी कमी होते हैं. Radius क्या होते हैं? कमी कमी होते इन दैट केस सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स इज लार्जर देन सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स सेंट्रिपिटल पिटल फोर्स इज लार्जर देन सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स दिस आर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स एंड सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स आई हैव एक्सप्लेन दैट विद सम एग्जांपल्स दिस आर द डायनामिक्स ऑफ सर्कुलर मोशन और डायनामिक्स ऑफ रोटेशनल मोशंस हियर वी कंसीडर द कॉज ऑफ द फोर्स कॉज ऑफ द मोशंस कॉज ऑफ द मोशन दैट मीन वी हियर वी कंसीडर द फोर्स applied on the body hence that is called the dynamics and this is the dynamics of circular motions or rotational motion now we explain some applications of the uniform circular motion we explain some applications of uniform circular motion here is a curve rod here is a curve rod 
दैट कर रोड इज हॉरिजॉन्टल हॉरिजॉन्टल है मत तो कर है टूवर्ड्स लेफ्ट साइड असा टर्न होता है या पद्धति ने कार जी ती कार तिकन ये कि इकन जाते है कन्सिडर करा दिस इज दी हॉरिजॉन्टल रोड इन अनादर डायग्राम्स कलर डायग्राम्स कार मूव अलॉन्ग ए स्ट्रेट लाइन पाथ ऑन ए हॉरिजॉन्टल रोड हियर द कार गोज अलॉन्ग दी कर रोड अलॉन्ग दी कर रोड वेन द कार गोज अलॉन्ग दी स्ट्रेट रोड लिनियर रोड इन ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन एट दैट टाइम द फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन इट्स आर इफ एट द टाइम यू कंसिडर दिस मोबाइल इज कार वेन द कार इज ऑन द रोड हॉरिजॉन्टल रोड एट दैट टाइम इट्स वेट एक्टिंग वर्टिकली डाउनवर्ड्स एंड एट द सेम मोमेंट्स एट द सेम मोमेंट्स द रिएक्शन फोर्स कैन बी एक्सर्ट दैट्स मीन्स वेन द कार और व्हीकल ट्रैवल्स अलॉन्ग द हॉरिजॉन्टल स्ट्रेट लाइन रोड एट दैट टाइम ओनली टू फोर्सेस विल बी एक्ट ऑन but when the car goes along the curved horizontal road when vehicle moves along the curved horizontal road at that time at that time the forces acting on that vehicles are its weight acting vertically downward directions here is given another is its normal reactions according to newton's third law actions and reactions are equal but in opposite directions this is the reaction force normal reaction force due to the road surface due to the road surface and when we suddenly turns for example if we seated in a car or on a motorcycle or on a bicycles and when we suddenly turns towards the left side at that time the tires goes away slips away from the center that means motion is motion of the tires are along the radially outward directions radially outward directions and due to that motion the frictional forces arise in opposite directions self adjusting frictional force self adjusting frictional force that is towards the center and due to that force of friction the vehicle moves safely along that curve road along that curve road here we can explain the points to be remember first draw the figure explain it from the figure like this consider a vehicle of mass m moves safely along a curved horizontal road that is the horizontal road that is not inclined that is horizontal road of radius r this is the center of the road radius is r with maximum speed v here we consider the maximum speed without skidding without slipping without overturning without turn overturning this is the maximum speed safely speed maximum safe speed beyond that speed the vehicle may be over turns or slips the forces acting on the vehicles are its weight we have already explained its weight acting vertically downward directions normal reaction force and the force of static friction that is the static friction just tends to move tends to move tends to move continuously slides hot nahi that tends to move that's mean that is the static friction here and that force here the normal reaction force the normal reaction force is perpendicular to the road surface acting vertically upward it balances the weight it balance the weight that means n is equal to mg here we given n is equal to mg the forces second point first point is figure and its explanation that is remember points second point forces acting on the vehicle sir the points lakshya the which these are the three forces the force of static friction is between the tires and road surface which provides the centripetal force which provides the centripetal force that is toward the center toward the center 
Hence, that force is called the centripetal force that provides the centripetal force. Here, centripetal force expression for the centripetal force. Now, that car moves safely along that same path. Hence, centripetal force and centrifugal forces are equal. Centripetal forces and centrifugal forces are equal. Hence, here we write. Fs is equal to mr omega square that is centrifugal force expression for centrifugal force mr omega square or that is equal to mv square upon r in magnetos that is in magnetos now taking the ratio of these two equations fs upon n fs upon n is equal to divide to this mg also divide mv square upon r by mg here we write the expression fs upon n is equal to r omega square upon g that is equal to v square upon rg but from these expressions it is clear that it is clear that for the given circular horizontal road r is constant so radius never change radius cannot be changed acceleration due to gravity also cannot be changed that means r and g are constant from these expressions speed linear speed or angular speed depends upon the force of friction as the speed increases the force of friction is increases as the speed increases force of friction will be increases and force of friction will be maximum when the velocity is maximum velocity is maximum but we know that force of static friction to the normal reaction that is called the coefficient of static friction so we have already studied in the 11th standard we have already studied in the 11th standard therefore instead of fs upon n we write mu s and therefore by using these equations we write as p square is equal to mu s rg or omega square is equal to mu s g upon r and therefore linear speed v is equal to mu s square root of mu s rg or omega is equal to square root of mu s g upon r mu s g upon r these are the expression for linear speed and angular speed linear speed and angular speed these questions asked on this articles is explain the motion of a vehicle on a curved horizontal track and hence obtain the expression for the maximum safe speed driven along that road this is one of the examples uh, sorry one of the questions asked on it articles on this articles this is the first applications this is the first applications this is the first applications second application in the same manner second application is second applications of uniform circuit motion is motion of a vehicle on the curved vertical track or in well of depth in well of depth well of depth means in marathi we call or marathi or hindi we call mot ka kuwa mot ka kuwa in hindi we call mot ka kuwa mot ka kuwa madhe jay vehicle chalavtat for example for example here the motorcyclist moves along this vertical track vertical track or car is are the well of depth these are the well of depth and in that case in that case the motion of the vehicle is also horizontal circular or b in horizontal circular orbit here we can explain that motions and the, obtain the expression for the maximum speed or sorry minimum speed here we find out the minimum speed minimum speed tya speed peksha jast rahila tar kay harkat nahi matra tya speed peksha jar kami rahila tar to jo vyakti asel motorcycle wala jo asel to khali il kiwa car ji asel ti khali il सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट मे रिवॉल्व हो मिनिम स्पीड की गरज एक्सप्लेनेशन करता पद्धति ने बो समा मोटरसाइकलिस्ट है कि ज्यादा मस एम है ज्यादा मोटरसाइकल साइकिल मोटरसाइकलिस्ट मस जो एम है हिर 
draw these diagrams draw these diagrams like this cylinders cylinders consider a vehicle of mass m moves safely along the curved vertical road or track of radius r here we consider the radius is r with a minimum speed v with a minimum speed v with a minimum speed safely driven with a minimum speed when such object can be revolves in a horizontal circular orbit at that time forces acting on that vehicles are one force forces acting on the vehicles are its weight mg acting vertically downward directions this is the downward direction this is the weight normal reaction the road surface is perpendicular road surface is perpendicular like this verticals verticals and motorcyclist is here motorcyclist is here therefore normal reaction is normal to this road surface normal to this road surface normal could have perpendicular to this road surface this is the normal reaction this is the normal reaction force this is the normal reaction force this normal reaction force is perpendicular to the road surface acting towards the center which provides the centripetal force which provides the centripetal force and another is when the motion is on the vertical track in a horizontal circle at that time if the speed is small at that time the vehicle moves down what directions that means tires moves along the downward direction therefore the force of friction arises vertically upward directions therefore here we can denotes the force of static friction is vertically upward direction the force of static friction fs between the tires and road surface and when this force of friction is exactly equal to its weight of the vehicle at that time it performs circular motion along the vertical on a vertical track these are the forces acting here the force of static friction is equal to the weight and normal reaction provides the centripetal force that is the difference between horizontal circular road and vertical circular road remember these things in horizontal circular motions normal reaction balances the weight and force of static friction provide the necessary centripetal force in vertical circular motion force of static friction balance the weight and normal reaction provides the necessary centripetal force that is the only difference here in both the applications remember these things therefore force of static friction to the normal reaction is equal to from this expressions fs upon n gettle upon fs la n ne divide ketle anje mg la mr omega square ne kiwa mg la mv square upon r ne divide kele the expression is fs upon n is equal to g upon r omega square or that is equal to rg upon v square but fs upon n is fs upon n is coefficient of static friction here here as the angular velocity decreases sorry increases the force of static friction decreases force of static friction decreases hence we write the minimum angular minimum speed hence here we calculate the minimum speed minimum speed that means to balance the weight force of static friction must be larger that means angular velocity is minimum angular velocity or linear speed must be minimum to be find out hence v square from this expressions v square is equal to rg upon mu s or omega square is equal to g upon mu s r and therefore minimum speed linear speed required is equal to square root of rg upon mu s or minimum angular speed is equal to square root of g upon mu s into r these are the expressions for the motion of a vehicle on a curved vertical track safely driven for safely driven that is this another application this is the another applications here another applications here another applications let's okay next applications 
that is the applications of uniform circular motion that is the application of uniform circular motion along the banked road i have been explained that in next periods here we here we stop okay now i have been explained that is in next periods thank you if we like this video subscribe on my youtube channels subscribe on my youtube channels and press the bell icon buttons on it for the further notifications now stop the here yeah.